This is 725, the Haber and Contact Processes. The Haber and Contact Processes are both for industrial chemical production. And in that case, we're worried about two ideas. The first is yield, which is how much product we get. And you calculate it by dividing the amount you get by how much you could get if you, everything went perfect and you used all the reactant up perfectly. Of course, in the real world, no one gets 100%. They usually they try to get as close to that as they can, depending on the situation. 90, 80, high 70s might be very good. Rate, of course, is also important, which is how fast the chemical process goes. And to illustrate the interplay between yield and rate, you could have a fantastic yield of 95%. Yay, the factory manager is very happy that you, the chemical engineer, has designed this process with such a high yield. So then he's very sad to find out that it takes five years to get that 95% product off of the reactants you gave it. So obviously both yield and rate are important. Of course, if you're a cat, a low rate might not bother you too much. Next is the Haber process for producing ammonia. It was invented by a man named Fritz Haber, who was a German scientist, lived quite a while ago, and he earned the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1918, specifically for his work for inventing the Haber process. He's also known for his work with Born, another scientist, inventing the Born-Haber cycle. This is ammonia, one nitrogen atom bonded to three hydrogen atoms. We make 120 million tons per year of this stuff worldwide. It's used for many things, fertilizers, plastics, refrigerants, and powerful explosives. And about 80% of all that is used to make fertilizer. Mungie's still bored. But ammonia is wonderful and makes many, many things that we all need and are economically important to the world. And we have Fritz Haber to thank for that. So, how do we make all this stuff? The Haber process. We can see that there are four gas moles on the left of this equilibrium and two gas moles on the right. This equilibrium is exothermic in the forward direction and endothermic in the reverse direction. The optimal conditions for the Haber process, using our knowledge of Le Chatelier's principle, we supply the reactants in the 1 to 3 molar ratio of the forward reaction, and we're constantly removing our product as it's produced. This, of course, will both these things are changing the concentrations of the reactants and products in such a way as to have the equilibrium try to counteract us by shifting itself to the right, which is where we want it. They use extremely high pressure for this, 200 atmospheres. The forward reaction is exothermic, so you'd think we'd want it quite cold to shift the equilibrium to the right. That would increase our yield. However, a low temperature decreases the speed of every chemical reaction, and we're in this business to make some money here. So this is a compromise. It looks like a very high temperature to you and I, but this is actually moderate for an industrial process. 450 degrees Celsius is a balance between keeping a high yield, but also maintaining a high enough rate. Finally, we add some catalyst, some finely chopped up iron with some aluminum and magnesium oxides. Next, we have the contact process for making H2SO4 which is sulfuric acid. It's the highest production chemical in the world. It's used to make fertilizers, detergents, dyes, explosives, drugs, and plastics. In fact, in total, the world produces 150 million tons of this every year. So, how do we make this fantastic stuff? We can make it in three easy steps. Even the cat thinks he can handle that. First, we take solid sulfur, mix it with oxygen, and get sulfur dioxide. Second step, we take that sulfur dioxide, mix it with more oxygen, and we get sulfur trioxide. Third step, we're taking the sulfur trioxide we made in step two, and we want to mix it with water to, to produce our sulfuric acid. However, the water and sulfur trioxide mix very energetically, and it's explosive and dangerous to carry out in a factory. So instead, we mix our sulfur trioxide gas with some liquid sulfuric acid that we already have. This produces an intermediate, H2S2O7, that we can then safely mix with water and get, finally end up with our sulfuric acid, what we want. Notice we have two moles of sulfuric acid coming out on the far right and only one mole of sulfuric acid going in on the left. So we're still producing sulfuric acid overall. Step two is the only process we need to speed up. And if we speed this up, it'll improve the yield and rate of the entire process. There's three gas moles on the left and two gas moles on the right and it's an exothermic process. So, what conditions do they actually use to make sulfuric acid? They use two atmospheres of pressure, 
high, but not nearly as high as the Haber process, and frankly I'm not quite sure why without doing a little research. They also use the same moderate temperature. They would like a low temperature to drive that exothermic reaction to the right of its equilibrium. However, they also need a higher temperature to maintain the rate of the overall process. This is the balance. And they use a catalyst. And for this reaction, they use vanadium oxide. Thank you.